Building a community that supports your brand is really important if you want to grow fast. Today, you'll learn the secret to building passionate, loyal, and incredibly valuable brand communities. I love this question because I think there's a misconception that community is very fluffy. And I think sometimes, yes, it has to be because you're catering to the emotions of your, of your community or your users or whatever it is. But just like any piece of business, community has to be measurable. Otherwise, you can't make it better, right? Whatever that means to you. In this episode of Growing Brands, we'll cover the basics of brand communities, why they're so important, and reveal which brands have the most passionate fans as measured by their willingness to get a logo tattooed on their arm. Very scientific, I know. Plus, we've got special guest Danielle Latef from Badassery to share how to create a community that provides a real sense of connection and value for its members. A brain community at its simplest level is a group of people who come together because of their interest or passion for a specific brand. Unlike social media communities, which are managed and operated by the companies that own the brand's trademark, anyone can join a brand community simply by caring about that brand. Brand communities can be influenced by the brand itself, but they are completely organic and can sometimes have agendas, desires, and feelings that are different from the brand's company. This dynamic is key to understanding their importance. There's a lot of data that suggests a brand's community plays a big factor in its growth. Benefits include market research. 86% of Fortune 500 companies report communities provide insight into customer needs. Product development. 66% of companies say they turn to brand communities for product development. Decision making. 64% of companies state that brand community has improved their decision making. And with customer loyalty, 53% of Americans who are part of a social brand community are more loyal to that brand. But the biggest benefit of growing a community is that every member has the ability to become an advocate for the brand, which drives further awareness, consideration, and preference for the brand among other people. How do you get a brand advocate? The secret to a strong brand community is passion. The more passionate a community member, the more likely they are to advocate for and stay loyal to that brand. And the ultimate measure of passion how about literally getting branded? We asked a thousand people on the internet, if you had to get the logo from a famous brand tattooed on your arm, which brand would you choose? Here's what they said. Honorable mentions included Under Armour, Starbucks, Lego, Trojan, Pepsi, Ford, Chevrolet, Harley Davidson, McDonald's, Budweiser, Adidas, and Disney. With 13 votes, Apple ranked number three in our study. At 30 votes, Coca-Cola came in second, and in first place, with a whopping 125 out of our 1,089 responses, Nike won our highly scientific study of passion within brand communities. Okay, so how exactly do you inspire people to want to join your community and then become passionate about your brand? For that, we reached out to Danielle Latef, founder of Badassery, a professional community for rising leaders. I had a chance to ask Danielle about her thoughts on building brand communities with real connection. Check it out. Okay, so what advantages do brands with strong communities have over brands that don't? Yeah, it's, it's a really great question. I think one that is on a lot of companies' minds now, especially during COVID, as communities are becoming more and more popular. And so there are definite advantages to to having that strong community for a company. I think number one is if done right, you immediately have a more engaged group of people who are obsessed with your brand. And we know as people who lead companies and as marketers, engagement is very, very hard to come by. So that engagement could mean that they, yes, purchase your product, but also means they're involved in discussions across social media. It means like generally they will stick with your brand much longer. Um, and that is an incredibly awesome thing to have, especially cost-wise, time-wise for marketers or, or professionals who are trying to keep that up. I think also similarly, they become your best promoters and your own marketers, right? Having your group of ambassadors to spread the word and bring on more people to adapt your service or buy your product is incredibly important. And then lastly, I love to think of, of communities as people who are so invested in your company's well-being and, and in the direction that you're going in that they become the people you get data from, the people you get feedback from. So as, as much as you give, give, give to your community, it's always okay to also make asks of them. And those asks can be surveys, it can be polls, it can be whatever, um, and will help different leaders 
create new products or services for their communities. So how do you quantify the strength of a brand community? And if so, what metrics should you be using? Yeah, I love this question because I think there's a misconception that community is very fluffy. And I think sometimes, yes, it has to be because you're catering to the emotions of your, of your community or your users or whatever it is. But just like any piece of business, community has to be measurable. Otherwise, you can't make it better, right? Whatever that means to you. So one of my favorite, and uh, you know, for, for me as somebody who, who runs communities as my job, my favorite metric would be the referral rate. So this could be for me, like having somebody obviously refer a friend into the community and sign up as a member. For brands, it might be like if you um, have a friend sign up with your, your referral code for a Glossier product, whatever it is. And I think it's really important because it means at that point that you as a company or as a brand have gained the trust of your consumer. And trust is very, very difficult to come by, right? We have so many products coming at us, but the companies that will win are the ones that tap into the emotional um, connection that they have with their, with their community. So to gain the trust and to have somebody vouch for you as a brand is really important. So for me, number one is referral rate. Like how, basically it tells me how good of a job I'm doing with my own community for them to promote my, my service. Um, another one that's important for me is also churn and retention rate. This makes much more sense for people who are running straight up communities versus, you know, thinking of community as social media or, or experiences. But for me, I always look at what my turnover rate is for my membership based community. And at what point did they opt out? Right. So my whole goal is to make an experience that's incredible for each individual member. So looking at the number of people who fall out over a certain period of time and at what point, and looking at those trends and seeing how we can optimize the experience. All right, last question. What are your best tips for building communities with real connection? Yeah, good question. I think it's so relevant to as, I don't know if you know, but a lot of communities are popping up, especially now, and people are super hungry for connection during quarantining and of course during the COVID crisis. Um, but one of my, my favorite quotes that I've read from the founders of People and Company is that communities often feel like magic, but they absolutely do not come together by magic. And it's the most accurate thing I've ever read because community building takes so much work you know those engaged communities that exist we're like wow they must have good products or whatever it is no it takes so much behind the scenes work to connect and to engage and so my first tip is to know your people very 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 well and to look at who is in the community both in a micro and macro level so my opinion is that a lot of communities are making the mistake of looking at their entire <clears throat> membership base as kind of like one blob. I think it's so important to look at each person as an individual and of course as one team and look at the micro communities that exist within it too, to see how you can cater your services, how you can talk to each group. So it's really important. I actually personally have a database for each one of and for my members and I use that to navigate my connections. Um, the second thing I would say is to build with your community and not for your community. So any time you're approaching something from the top down, it just means that there's a goal. It's typically a sales goal, right? So our, our role as leaders of community is to listen into what our community is already talking about take that and then create the experience with them. Never really top down. Of course, sometimes that happens, but mostly with them. And then the third thing is that, again, another role for a community leader is to just create more leaders. So that could mean assigning roles to different members who are naturally popping up as, as leaders in the community. It could mean creating an ambassador program, but giving the, the members something to do actually makes them feel like they're more a part of it, like they're seen, and ultimately creates a more engaged community base. Those are all super valuable tips. Really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks so much, Josh. If you like this episode, then take a few seconds to follow or subscribe to this channel, or head over to branddata.com to download the full results from our brand tattoo study. Okay, it's your turn. What role does community have in your brand's growth? What benefits do you get from your community? And what do you do to engage with and grow your brand's community? Let me know with a comment before you leave. Is it recording? Should you, buh, oh boy. Just be, sh ah! mix mess. Why can't I say that? Flank steaks. Oh, f you script thingy. Would you go back in time and make sure that I didn't say it that way? Thank you.